Next is something I strongly believe everyone should have. If you know someone that doesn't have one of these, that's what they're getting for their birthday or Christmas. I, I don't make the rules, I just follow them. What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, hello, my name is Rachel. And on this channel, I upload DIYs, thrift flips, lifestyle videos, and everything in between. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you guys my favorite DIY tools. So these are the tools that I know will get me through most of my DIYs, thrift flips, and furniture renovations that I do. And of course, as always, I will link them all down in the description below. But before we get started, please give this video a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button to see more videos like this one. And also ring that bell icon so you'll be notified every time I post. All right, let's get started. So these are truly the power behind any project I need to do. So I've got five things here. I know that if I at least have these with me, I should be able to accomplish it. So the first one would be my sweet circular saw. I actually have two circular saws. So this one, although it's blue, is a Ryobi saw. And like I said in my last video, ooh, shameless plug, my last video, if you want to watch it, will be right there. All right, so I originally got a power circular saw from Walmart. I think it's a Skillman circular saw, and it worked pretty well. The battery didn't last as long, but for, I think it was like $22, it did exactly what I needed it to. And then I went to the flea market in Canton, and this guy had a Ryobi circular saw, and he offered it to me for $5. And with Ryobi, if you have one battery, it will work for all the tools. So I'm like, for $5, I will take the risk of it working. He said he was pretty sure it worked. I'm like, you know what, for five bucks, if it does work, that would be great. So yes, this is my Ryobi saw and it works with the battery. Next, I've got my Ryobi power drill. This is a half inch keyless chuck. Works very well. Two speed settings, easy reverse buttons, a magnetic, magnetic little screw holder and a place to hold a drill bit so normally I'll have like one drill bit in the machine then a screw a screw bit down here but I got this from Facebook marketplace and then this also from Facebook marketplace but from somewhere else so you can buy new tools and you're guaranteed to get ones that work I started looking at Facebook marketplace and things like that because a lot of times people will just upgrade to more professional grade tools since I don't need those I will be more than happy to take the Ryobi stuff. So that's what this is. Next is, I wish I was sponsored, but I'm not Ryobi. If you see this, please sponsor me. Wow, that was amazing. My Ryobi sander. This is actually a corded sander, and this is a sheet sander. So this one just vibrates back and forth, and I like to use this over my orbital sander because with a random orbit sander, you have a risk of getting... If you use the wrong pressure in the wrong area, you can get some scuff marks if you don't use it correctly. But with a sander that vibrates back and forth, you can go with the grain of the wood and not risk having those circular marks. Although I do use the other one, it's a lot quicker at removing stuff, but if I wanna just have a nice finish, I will use this one. And I like the sheet sander because I can use Dollar Tree sandpaper sheets with them. Of course, they're not the strongest, but you can get a pack of like 20 for $1 so it's amazing but i want to get a corded one because i have the battery but this is my or a cordless one because i have the battery but this is my sander next is something that i strongly believe everyone should have if you know someone that doesn't have one of these that's what they're getting for their birthday or christmas i i don't make the rules i just follow them it is a toolbox just a simple old toolbox i got this one as a gift i think in middle school it's just got let's open it let's find out it has some of the stuff are in my other bag but yeah hammer screwdrivers pliers scissors a box cutter it came with like some screws and some wall anchors and a measuring tape and i think that was everything but it's cute it was pink it's very lightweight and when i got it I also received this cute little tool bag, which is like full of stuff at the moment. Um, gloves, I don't even know what's in here. Gloves, uh, oh. I thought I had no levels at my house. I actually have three. I have two here and one over there, so I have to give one back to my mom now. They're coming for you. 
But yeah, and it's not over yet. Do you see how cute this is? It was a little tool belt. And who doesn't want a pink little tool belt for when you're working with your tools? I know I do. So yes, if you know someone that doesn't have a toolbox, please, I don't care what they ask you for for their birthday or for Christmas, they're getting a toolbox that it is what it is. The last thing, and it's also something I got from the flea market, is, oh, my set of workhorses. So I have two, I've got this one and another one that's the exact same, but uh, I think they're like $10 at the flea market. So you can also make stuff like this, but since I saw it for cheap, I got it for cheap. And yeah, it opens up, it sits right on the ground. And what I do is I use a piece of scrap wood and I lay it over the top of both and I can use that to saw pieces of wood. I can make a makeshift table out of it, but these are just really convenient because they're plastic and they're lightweight and they fold up really thin so I can throw them in my car and take them with me. And this is just a bonus, but please have goggles. Safety is first. You only have two eyes and they last you your whole life. So these are the powerhouses of DIY. So the items that I'm about to show you are my more crafty type items. I know that if I want to make over a project, but I'm not sure what direction I want to go with it. If I can even start out with these things, I'll typically be able to find my vision for it in the grand scheme. So the first thing is a glue gun. I have, I think I have a handful because if I would ever look for one and I couldn't find it, I would typically just buy another one because they're $5. So I just started having a collection, but now I have a high temp glue gun, which you can see I used on that wreath project, and a medium to low temp glue gun. So I like to use this one more, especially with thinner items that I know the heat will come through and hit my fingers because this gets really hot and I don't like to burn my fingers. And I am very hands-on with like pushing things into the glue, but it's definitely stronger. And this one is just the medium temp one that is more all purpose. So if you got something that you know really high temp might even melt it, I would stick with the medium to low temp one. But if you need like a second glue gun, then the high temp is the way to go. Apparently they make wireless glue guns. So that's my next investment. I had no idea. This next thing is literally so versatile, it's crazy. I first got privy to because of watching other YouTube videos, but it is this marble contact paper. So this is the Duck brand contact paper. So this roll is about $7, but I would always see Dollar Tree videos of this marble contact paper. So I know they probably have it there. I've just never been able to find it. It's always sold out, but the Duck brand contact paper is a lot. And yeah, I tend to overbuy it. So this is the Duck brand. I got this one. I got it from a Kmart in Australia and I brought, I bought three rolls of it and I took it home. That's how much I love contact paper. So I know if I've got some contact paper, it will go a long way and it doesn't have to just be marble. I also have, so these are the, this is the GQ. They are, they are marketed as book covers, but these are also the Dollar Tree contact paper. So these are really helpful for Cricut projects. Like if you wanted to make stencils or anything where you would want to not necessarily you don't need the actual color, but I can run these through my Cricut machine and make stencils, dab them on, and not have to spend a lot of money for the Cricut brand vinyl, which is not a cheap cheap, which is what I'm looking for. So the Dollar Tree contact paper goes a long way, but in any color or pattern that you like, that you have going on throughout the area or the home you're in, if you just have rolls of that on hand, you can always use it to spruce up any project. And the last thing, so I tried to pick them all up so I could be dramatic and show you how many I have, but I couldn't. And it is truly just spray paint. Spray paint to me is just the best thing to happen to paint besides maybe chalk paint. And this is a primer because it was what was closest to me, but stay tuned because I might do a DIY with this. But I don't, if you do it right, there are no brush lines. It's simple. You do have to be a little bit patient when it comes to spraying it, but I have a lot of spray paint, especially gold spray paint. So most of the metals in my apartment are gold. So I have like six cans of gold spray paint. And I think I also have a lot of white spray paint. I will insert a video clip, but I always have spray paint on deck. And if there is nothing else I will do something, I will spray paint it gold because I know that I can put it somewhere if it's gold or I can sell it if it's gold. 
And if silver's your thing, rose gold is your thing, bronze, copper, brass, iron, tin, nickel, you get the idea. Having a can of the spray paint in your metal of choice can definitely go a long way. You can, and it's easy, so. Spray paint is the last thing in this crafty section of tools that I love. So these two items definitely streamline the DIY process when it comes to setting up and cleaning up. So the first one is this speed square and I'm surprised I haven't had a speed square before. I don't know what took me so long to finally get one. I knew they were useful, but I always thought I could just make do with like a ruler or a straight edge or something, but this just makes making your cut lines and any kind of perfectly 90 degree lines so easy. So there's a lip right here. So you put this against whatever you're measuring. That way you know that this will be flush up against the other side, assuming it's like a rectangle shape or has some sort of 90 degree angle that you're trying to cut. It also shows angles. So I'll do it this way. So if I have this sitting on one side and this sitting on the other, then you know that if you mark it anywhere in this line right here, this would be a 90 degree angle or a 45 degree angle, like a 25 or 65. And so that's what is super cool about this whenever I need to make some angled cuts and not use a miter saw and I just wanna use like a hand saw or circular saw. This makes it really easy. And then I like this one because it's metal. So the odds of this warping are very slim. It's a very thick metal and the numbers on here are white, which contrasts really well with the blue, so it's very easy to see. This definitely, if I had used this for some projects, it would have saved me a good 10, 20 minutes of just making sure the lines were perfectly straight before I cut. And yeah, so this is my speed square. This is the Empire True Blue speed square, the metal one. And it also has, it has rafter conversions, so. They make a bunch of different types, but this is my favorite one. The other thing that makes cleanup so easy is this cordless battery powered Dyson. This is the Dyson V7 motorhead. So one, it's super easy to disassemble and reassemble. So this is the motor and the canister part, and then it can come separate from the tubing, which also comes separate from the tube head. So I've used it before when I like vacuum out my car, you can attach the head right to the motor and it just goes. And it's all by this red release button. Then you can also easy release it without having to touch any bags. So you pull this red tab and then the bottom flap dumps open into the trash can. And it comes with a wall mount. That way you can hang it up and charge it. I move it around a lot so I don't have this up but the attachments are also super helpful. So whenever I do crafts, like if you watched the DIY wreath video, which will be right here, I made a wreath with moss and this made vacuuming up all of that moss super easy. Um, this one, oops, release. This one will get into tight crevices and so will this one. And they just, you know what? This is not, for this vacuum, but they all have the red button, so it just snaps on. And it has max mode, and then battery saver. But yeah, it is so lightweight, and it's just so convenient. I don't, I don't even pull out my big vacuum half as much, just because I know I can run this for a few minutes a day and keep my place clean. These are the two things that help the prep and the cleanup and just make it so much easier. All right, well, there you have it. My favorite DIY tools that I use for almost every project that I do. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you haven't already, you should give me a follow on Instagram because if you think I'm cool now, just wait until you see my Instagram. That's, I'm just, I'm just saying. I, I just, I wouldn't want to miss out on it, which is why I am, you know, giving you this beautiful information. I will put it, I'll put it right here. I'll give you a few minutes just to just type it in your little phone or your computer, doesn't matter. Give it a little look. You got it? Okay. Thanks so much for watching this video and I will see y'all in the next one. Bye. Hey Google, play story of tonight. Mm. 
Tomorrow there'll be more of us. All right, what's popping? I don't know how we're gonna start this. Conclusion.